Welcome back to another exciting Pokemon Battle video. Today we've got a double header in the Smogon OU mixed here, first against Lazy Boy and then against Reese. These are some fun competitive matches and I'm excited to show you how they played out. But the real MVP of today's video are Weavile. This thing absolutely pops off in the first game, landing some insane hits and carrying its weight like never before. So buckle up, it's going to be a wild ride. Let's dive into these two epic battles and see how Weavile steals the spotlight. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get into it. Alright, Lazy Boys, but a pretty cool team with the Trevenant, the Hooper Unbound, the Bastiodon, Great Tusk, Blastoise, and Enamorous Therian. I'd love to see it. That's a really cool team. Um, the Bastiodon representation is amazing in this game, with both Bastiodons being on both teams. Awesome. Um, so I'm looking at this matchup, and I'm thinking, you know what? Um, Cinderace makes a really good lead here. Um, we can scare the Bastiodon out with a High Jump Kick, and also... A lot of things. So, uh, they either lead with Great Tusk or we just lead with Cinderace and U turn on whatever they lead with. Um, I think Cinderace is a really strong lead here, so let's go for it. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Lazy Boy. So, they're going to lead off with Gloria Hole, the Hooper and Bound, as we lead off with our Cinderace. So, not a bad lead. Now, they could be Scarfed, I guess. Um, I doubt if they've led with it. They probably switch out here into Great Tusk. So I'm going to go for a U-turn right off the bat. So they go for a Psychic, revealing the Archoy Scarf. We should live this, though. We do live, barely. We go for a U-turn, and that is definitely going to KO that Hooper Unbound with a Choice Scarf. Definitely KOs the Hooper Unbound. So Cinderace coming through for us once again, getting the KO on the Hooper Unbound in turn one. We did sustain some damage, but you know what? It's fine. Cinderace does really well against their team, uh, other than the Great Tusk. And the Bastion, if they find out, we don't have high jump kick, but I feel like they will not know that. So uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm leaning towards whatever I go into, they're going to be able to counter with. So I think I go Cyclozar here and we just drop a Draco on something, unless it's the Enamorous. So we'll bring Cyclozar in now. And like I said, if they bring the Enamorous in here, it's fine. We can just kind of, we go for a U-turn. April comes in. Who's April? That's the Enamorous. So Enamorous comes in. And uh, we can just go for a U-turn here. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on out of there with a U-turn. So far, we've had two turns, and both turns I've gone for a U-turn. So all you anti-switches out there probably really hate me right now. So let's go for a U-turn. Break it to potential Sash. Not that it really matters. They're not Sashed. Unless they are. In which case, wow. Um, now what do we do? Uh, I'm leaning towards Suicune. Leaning towards the Slowking. I think Slowking's the better option. I don't think they would go for an Earth Power there. So uh, let's go into the Drip Queen. They do go for a Calm Mind. That's interesting. So Calm Mind is interesting um, for sure. Very interesting. So we want to go for a Sludge Bomb here, right? We always go for a Sludge Bomb here because we can live an Earth Power from this thing. No problem, even at plus one. Earth Power comes through. Obviously, the outspeed us. We do live that finally. And we go for a Sludge Bomb just to get some damage off, um, which gets a crit. Nice. Enamorous goes down to a critical hit. What a turn of events this is. So Hooper and Bound and Enamorous both go down. Hooper is not going down to a crit, though. It went down because they unfortunately went for a Psychic, thinking it would KO Cinderace. But Cinderace was a bit more bulky than they thought. So they're going to go into Shell Shock of the Blastoise. Looking amazing as well. I love the colors. Um, they're going to Shell Smash in our face. So I'm going to go for a Thunder Wave here, just in case they do. If they turn out to be physical or something, an Earthquake goes, at least we know. Um, they are going to Terror, though. Hopefully not Terror Electric or Ground. That would be the ideal situation if they're not Terra Electric or Ground. As they go for the Terra Ground. Of course they do. Of course they do. So that is going to get a Shell Smash off right now. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's the Shell Smash. We can't paralyze them because the Thunder Wave won't affect the Terra Ground. I guess they just read us like a book then. And they got the Shell Smash off. So this Blastoise has just turned into a massive threat. Mahusive threat. But we haven't terra yet. And the Shell Smash does raise its attack stat as well so the wire herb is going to come into effect we go for a thunder wave and obviously it doesn't matter so now what do we do now what do we do now what do we do we can still use slow king for later so i'm going to go ahead and um sack off our cyclers are here then again can we use i don't know i don't know if that was the right play but they go for a terror blast which is going to be a ground of course and that's probably going to ko cyclers are from here as um, down we go. So there we go. Cyclozar goes down to a plus two. Terror Blast from a Terror Ground Shell Smash Blastoise. Um, so now we are going to have the Terror. Cinderace is still really useful for that Trevenant. So we want to keep that around. I think we Terror Bastion on here. I think we Terror Bastion on here, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
We'll bring Bastion on in. We've got the Sturdy. So we go for a foul play here. And foul play should two shot them since they're plus two, plus two physical attack. So they go for a Terra Blast, which is, of course, going to take us right down to our Sturdy. But we have got the Sturdy. So I'm not too worried about that. We go, we get the Sturdy. And we've got Custat Berry now as well. We go for a foul play. It should do a lot of damage. Not enough, though. Not enough damage. Would Body Press do more than foul play here? I don't think it would. I think we just need to put this in range for Weavile. So let's go for the Custat Berry foul play. There we go. Custat Berry comes into effect. And as long as they don't have Aqua Jet, which they don't, foul play should take this thing in range for Ice Shard, which it does. So Terra Blast comes through. There we go. That's going to take out Bastion. So Bastion saves the day. Bastion saves the day here. So Weavile can now come in, finish this thing off. That is, that is what I'm getting from this. So that's amazing. So... Uh, Weevil can now come in and Ice Shard this thing, being a ground type, he's going to be weak to it, so we'll bring Midnight in now. No time like the present, and we'll go for an Ice Shard right now. They withdraw the Blastoise, they're going to save it for later, they could potentially get another Shell Smash off later, if they get rid of the Weevil. So they're going to go into Bunker, which is their own Bastard on. We go for an Ice Shard, break that Sturdy, which is great. Um, and now, they reveal they are Leftovers, which is good to know, so um, Leftovers is really good to know. Not Custat Berry like me. Uh, now we go Sweet in 100% of the time here. And we can set up a Calm Mind potentially. So we withdraw Weavile, which is great. Weavile, which is great. And we go into North Wind. The uh, Sweet So that's great. Uh, Sweet we should just probably go for a Scald here because they might have Raw. But um, they go for a Body Press, which is going to do no damage to us. And they're going to get that Leftovers recovery as well. So if they are stirred, if they are Raw. Which they might be. Um, we don't want to Calm Mind in their face. We want to just Scold them to death. To be fair, I don't think, looking at the team, I don't think we need to Calm Mind up. Let's just Scold away. Let's just Scold away. So Scold comes through. Does a lot of damage. Not much, though. They go for a Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rock Raw? Stealth Rock body, 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 body Press. And then what? Let's find out. Let's find out. So they probably Roar us here. So we go for a Scold here all the time. Scold comes through. There we go. We might burn them. We don't burn them. And there's the raw. There's the raw. So it's a good job to set up Calm Mind. It's a good job to set up Calm Mind. Otherwise, that would have been a wasted turn. As we get dragged out into our Slow King, which isn't the worst position to be in, to be fair, because now we get to set up a Future Sight. So they withdraw the Bastion on, which makes a lot of sense if they don't want to get hit by a Flamethrower. And they're going to go into Shell Shocker once again, the Blastoise, which is a good switch. And um, we go for a Future Sight. That's going to definitely um, set things up for later. And now we pretty much have to go for a Sludge Bomb here. Because if we take out the Blastoise the next turn with Weavile after Chili Receptioning, then the Future Sight won't hit anything. So let's go for a Sludge Bomb here. They go for a Terra Blast just to get the damage off on the Slow King. That makes a lot of sense. As uh, it's not going to take us out, but it does do a lot of damage. Yeah, there we go. A lot of damage. Critical hit. Fair enough. Fair enough. I got a crit earlier on the Enamorous. Sludge Bomb does take out the Blastoise, though, which is nice. And um, now they pretty much have to bring something in to get hit by the uh, Future Sight, which is great. And I'm looking at the matchup, and I'm thinking, you know what? Trevenant would be nice. Bastiodon would be great, because it'd take it out. And Great Tusket would take it out as well. So they go into Groot. So Groot, the Trevenant, comes in. I don't really have the best switch in here. I will be honest. So I'm going to have to let this thing go down. I'm going to try and go for... Uh, I'll go. I'll try and go for a Sludge Bomb just in case. They go for a Substitute. Ah, interesting. So Substitute's there to try and avoid the Future Sight, I'm guessing. But our Sludge Bomb should break it. Our Sludge Bomb should break this Substitute. As the Substitute does fade, which is fantastic. And then they get hit by the Future Sight attack, which is amazing. That's going to do a lot of damage. A lot of damage. They do have a Berry, though. And probably Harvest. Oh. Oh, it's an Attack Boosting Berry. Interesting. At least it's not Citrus Berry, though. That's the nice thing. At least it's not Citrus Berry. Let's go for a Sludge Bomb again. They go for a Protect. They're obviously trying to get another Harvest, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, to get that berry again. So we go for another sludge bomb. Obviously, it's going to do no damage to a protected mon. I guess we could have future side there just in case they did protect. But I didn't want to risk them getting a sub up. 
I didn't want to risk him getting a sub up because that'd be the last thing we need. Definitely the last thing we need. So they get the harvest, which is going to give them another lychee berry. And they're going to consume it because they're at the right amount of health. Getting a second attack boost. So this Trevenant looks pretty threatening, but it doesn't get priority other than Sucker Punch, I don't believe. So we should be fine. So they go for a Poltergeist. They could miss this, but we don't We don't miss. But that's nice. That's going to take out Slow King, but at least they didn't get the um, Substitute up. So now we can just go into good old Weavile and we can Ice Shard this thing. The Stealth Rocks are up, so this is going to sting a little bit, but it should be fine as Weavile comes in like so. Looking amazing. So let's see how this plays out. So let's go for an Ice Shard now. I don't see any reason not to go for an Ice Shard here. They go for a Protect. That's fine. They want to see what we're going to do because as far as they're concerned, we've not got boots, so we might be banded. Or Focus Sash, but probably Banded, right? But we're not on no, a normal gem. So let's see what they do here. So they're going to Harvest, going to get another Lychee Berry. Which is going to pop, but it's fine. We don't have to worry about that too much. They're plus three attack, which is something to worry about. But not while we have Ice Shard on our squad. Ice Shard comes through. That's going to take out the Trevenant, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And now the Great Tusk can go down to a Triple Axle, hopefully. And the... Bastiodon, we can tear a ghost on that thing. So they're going to go bunker. Now, they're obviously really confident they can take a knockoff here. Or they think we're knocked in. So I'm going to tear a ghost and go for a knockoff here. Now, why am I tear a ghosting? It's because they, they've shown body press. I would love, 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 love for them to go for a body press here if knockoff doesn't KO. If knockoff doesn't KO. So we go for a tear a ghost real quick. There we go. We go for a knockoff, and that KOs the Bastion, so we didn't even need to Terra. But at least now, we are immune to close combat from Great Tusk. And we won't die to a... Well, we might die to a Headlong Rush. We shouldn't die to an Earthquake, though. So Wooly's going to come in. That's the Great Tusk. And obviously, they are Protosynthesis. Is it going to be Speed? Attack. That's great. That's great. So we know this is an offensive one. So we know Triple Axel has a good chance of killing... If we can hit all three times. So Triple Axel comes through once. Twice. Three times. And it's not KO, but it's nearly done the trick. Nearly done the trick as they go for a bulk up. Oh, they thought... They thought... Ah, oh, they thought they could live that better. As we go for an Ice Shard now, not wanting to uh, hit one Triple Axel and not KO. And Weavile wins us the game. <laughs> Gotta love it. GG, Lazy Boy. That was a pretty fun one. I did enjoy that one very much. Very, very much. Lee Weavile came through. What a legend. All right, Reese has brought a pretty cool-looking team with the Hisuian Zoroark, Skeledurge, Meowskurada, Revivroom, Quackable, and a Salamence. I like the free Paldean Star thing. That's pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's going to be Meowskurada and the Zoroark, potentially. Potentially the Zoroark. Um, they could lead with Revivroom. He's got Punk Shot. I think our best lead here is going to be um, Cinderace, so I'm going to lead with Cinderace now, because it has to be the Zoroark, I believe, or is it a Speed Tower, one of the two. Uh, either way, you can live and attack from it. And also, I mean, Ascard can't KO us with Knock Off, even if it's Banded, I don't think. So, um, I think if they do lead with Miascarada, we might just hard switch out into Bastionon, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. So, Reese is going to lead off with Nightcore. Which is the Meowskarada, nice and shiny, as we lead off with Strike of the Cinderace. So, because this thing could be banded, we're better off just hard switching, because we don't take unnecessary knockoff damage. Um, I kind of want to go Weavile, if we're assuming, but they could go U-turn here. So, I think our best bet is going to be the Bastiodon. So, I'm going to go Bastiodon now. So, we're going to withdraw Cinderace, of course. We don't want to get hit by a choice banded knockoff, for sure. And we're going to go into Wall Rose, the Bastiodon, which is awesome. So, they do go for a U-turn. This is going to bounce right off us. Um, he does break off sturdy, but it's fine. I'm not really too bothered about that. Bastion was a great switch there. So Miascarada goes back. What are they going to go into? Probably the Quackable, if I had to guess. If I had to guess, I'd say the Quackable was coming in. Tiamat comes in. That's going to be the Salamence. Ooh, okay. So Salamence comes in. If we assume he's going to go for a Dragon Dance here, we should probably switch out. Um, I can't switch out. I can't. I can't afford it to go for a Dragon Dance. Let's go for a Foul Play just in case it Dragon Dances up. Flamethrower is a special Salamence. Interesting. So that's um, interesting. So we go for a Foul Play. It's going to do a nice chunk of damage. It's the Zoroark. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. So Zoroark goes um, gets some Foul Play damage, which is nice. They probably don't want Foul uh, to go down here. 
I think I think we just go for another foul play though. And um, they actually go for another flamethrower. They're just gonna get as much damage off on the Bastion as possible. Makes a lot of sense. Bastion gets a KO on the Zoroark though. Look at Bastion go. What an absolute legend. Legend. So Zoroark is down for the count. And now we have to worry about the real Salamence coming in and setting up. Pochita comes in. That's going to be the Skeledurge, right? Yeah, Skeledurge comes in. That's a good name for a Skeledurge. I like that. Um, we know what. They're going to get a Torch Song regardless if we switch out or not. So what's it best to switch out into? Um, if we assume they're going to Terra at some point, I suppose we could go for a Stealth Rock here. Last Ditch Stealth Rocks. I think I will go for a Stealth Rocks just because we have got the Custat Berry. So I know we'll go first. Foul play won't have done any damage to a Skeledurge, and at least we get the rocks up now, which is the important part. So, Custard Berry comes through for us, which is great. Get the stealth rocks up, and they go for a Torch Stone, which is going to finish off Bastion. So, Bastion did really well here. It took out the Zoroark after sponging two flamethrowers or that thing, and then it gets the stealth rocks up as well. So, Bastion, give a round of applause to Bastion, everyone. Seriously, a big, big round of applause for Bastion. So, now they've used up their Throat Spray. So, Weavile's knockoff is no longer going to KO or nearly KO. Um, what's the best way to go about this? I'd say the best way to go about this is to drop a Draco with Cyclizar into Suicune. I think that's the way to go. So we'll go Cyclizar now. And they might be thinking, hey, this Cyclizar might have something that can hurt us. So they might switch out into Rever Room. I think Draco Meteor is the best option anyway. So I'm going to go for the Draco here. Just get damage off. They do Terra. Are they going to Terra Fairy? We might lose Cyclozar here if they Terra Fairy, but if they Terra Fairy at least, we can do something about it. So there's the Terra Fairy. So they're going to go for an Alluring Voice probably. Or a Terra Blast. One of the two. Alluring Voice, Terra Blast, whatever. We go for the Draco. It's obviously going to fail here because of the Fairy typing. And they go for a Terra Blast, which is of course going to KO Cyclozar at plus one with Stab. So Terra Blast goes ahead and takes out Cyclozar in one clean hit. But at least we forced the Terra, so this we can work with this. We can work with this. So what we can do here is um, we could go Suicune. We could um, we could go Slowking. I'm, I'm leaning more towards Slowking because I know it can take a hit and I know it can go for Sludge Bombs. So I'm going to go Slowking here. Good old Drip Queen. There we go. And I'm going to go for a Sludge Bomb. I don't see any reason not to go for a Sludge Bomb here. So they withdraw. So they lose the Throw Spray boost, which is nice. And the Torch Strong boost. So they're no longer plus two. They're going to go into Gear Shift, which is going to be the Rever Room. Yep, Rever Room comes in. Being immune to Sludge Bomb, it makes a perfect sense from a great switch. So they've got the Air Balloon as well, which is good to know. Um, Air Balloon is a big problem for us. Not really. Um, now, however, I know I can take a high horsepower. They probably go for a Shift Gear. Um, I kind of want to Thunder Wave it. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go for the Thunder Wave first, because they are going to go for a Shift Gear like I expected. And if I can paralyze them, that's going to be way better for us. So the speed is going to race sharply. Attack's going to raise by one stage. We go for a Thunder Wave and we miss. Yeah, we missed. We missed. So that is unfortunate. We do need to paralyze this thing though. So I'm going to go for another one. They go for high horsepower. It shouldn't KO us. It does KO us even at plus one. That River Room is way too strong for us right now. Way too strong for us. So we have to go Suicune here. And we have to go for the Skull Burn. I know we can take a Gunk Shot because we're a Suicune. Very bulky. I know we can take it, so let's go for a Scold here, just to try and get the burn. It's the only way we're going to get around this. They go for a Gunk Shot. We should be able to live one of those. Yeah, we do. That's good. We go for the Scold. Can we get the burn? Does over half, which is nice. Air Balloon pops. No burn. No burn. That is not good. Let's go for a Scold again. High horsepower. That's fine. Takes out Suicune. So this is becoming a very difficult Rev Room to deal with right now. However, I do believe we can still do this. I do believe we can still do this. If we can get rid of the Rever Room, because they've already terrored, the Salamence is no threat to Weavile. So we go Cinderace here and we Sucker Punch. We go Cinderace here and we Sucker Punch. There we go. Sucker Punch can come through. Should take out the Rever Room. If Skull took out the Rever Room, then this should as well. So Sucker Punch comes through. Takes out the Rever Room. There we go. So if Skull does over half to the Rever Room, then Sucker Punch should definitely KO. That's that's my, my, my reasoning there. So we took care of the Rever Room. Unfortunately, we did lose Suicune in the process, but it's fine. And we also lost the Slow King. So that Skeleton is going to be very hard to take out. Pochita comes in once again. Um, this time, though, Pointer Stones are going to dig in. We're going to have to Terror. We're going to have to Terror here and go for a Pyro Ball. 
and hope it does a 2 hit KO on this thing. And hope it's not a defensive Skeledurge, but if he's got Throw Spray with um, Terror Blast and all that, I believe it's more of a specially offensive, so it'll be bulky special attack with max HP, max special attack. So I'm hoping a Terror Fired Pyro Ball will two-shot here. And if it doesn't, then we're kind of boned. So we go for that Pyro Ball. It's boosted by Terror. We don't miss, which is nice. Cinderace, you're not going to KO. That's that's unfortunate. So they go for a Terra Blast. That's not going to KO, wasn't luckily for us. It's not boosted, and also we resist being a fire type. So that does no damage, which is fantastic. Um, which tells me that Pyro Ball should 2 KO from here. So let's go for a Pyro Ball again. Boosted by Terra. And there we go. Pyro Ball comes through. It's a two shot from where we're at, but will they let us? They go for a Slack Off. Okay, Slack Off is fine. Slack Off is fine. If we assume they're going to go for... Let's go for a Pyro Ball again. Pyro Ball comes through once again. Nice, nice power move as well. It's bouncing right off it. That's still a two shot. But they go for another Slack Off. The thing is, we will run out of Pyro Balls before they run out of Slack Offs. Because we've already used three and they've only used two. Is it better to go into Weavile here? Because the thing is, our Libero changes to a Dark type, so we're not actually getting the full power out of Pyro Ball here. We're getting the Terror boosted, but if we were already a Fire type as well, it would be much better. Is it better to go into Weavile here? They've got to go for a Shadow Ball, right? So let's go for a U turn into Weavile. Get a bit of chip with U turn. We're going to Weavile. I don't think they'll go for a Torch Song, but even if they do, it shouldn't one shot us. Shouldn't one shot us. And then we can go for a Fake Out and then a Triple Axle. So let's go Weavile now. Slack off again. That's that's even better. That means Weavile takes no damage on the switch in. So now we need to put this thing in range for Pyro Ball, pretty much. So we go for a fake out here all the time. We fake out. Boosted by normal gem. Because I thought Pickpocket were the same as Magician, but it doesn't apparently. I thought it was like Magician, but for physical attacks, but I guess not. So uh, now we go for a triple axle because they've already lost their item and it resists um, the uh, dark typing. And we hit one time. Are you kidding me? We hit one time. But we're, luckily we live and are able to go for another triple axle. But I bet we hit one time again. Watch, watch, watch. Or it misses. There's the once. There's the twice. Three times. Took it down to half. That's not too bad. And they go for another torch song, which is fine. So that is... Unfortunate, but I'm pretty confident that Pyro Ball will take this thing out now. So we're being pushed to the brink here. Being pushed to the brink. Let's go for the Cinderace switch. Now that Cinderace's Libero has been reset to fire, we should be alright to go for a Pyro Ball and it should take him out from here. I could be wrong though. Let's go for the Pyro Ball and find out. Did we miss? We missed. We missed. We missed the Pyro Ball. And that's going to take us out. So there we go. So that's the, that's the game. And that wraps up our battles for today. Both Lazy Boy and Reese put up a great fight. And those were some really fun matches. Weavile definitely came through as the MVP. Pulling off some key plays when we needed them the most. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Pokemon content. And if you want to give this team a try for yourself, the rental code is on screen right now. Feel free to test it out and let me know how it works for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next battle.